You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Order of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there, I'm Philip Heitzen, and today is Friday, September 9th, 2022. Six. As procurement professionals, we're always on the lookout for ways to bring additional sources of value to our business. But while we typically think of that in terms of the expense side of the business, what about the revenue side of the profit and loss account? Well, our colleagues on the sales side of the business are always looking for advice on how to navigate procurement in their sales pursuits. How can they navigate the process? What does the way that the procurement team communicates with them mean about their role in the business? What are the signals to look for to determine if procurement is a partner or a blocker? Well, no one knows this better than you. So as a first step, offer to walk the sales team through the ways that procurement is incentivized, how they segment suppliers and potential suppliers, and what to look for to determine if they have a real shot at winning business or if they're there just to make up the numbers. Doing so will create value that may go way beyond the savings that you generate. Five. This week, we published one of my favorite over conversations on the Art of Procurement podcast. I recorded it in person on a recent trip to the UK with Simon Geel. Simon is the Executive Vice President of Procurement at Proxima. We had a wide-ranging exchange about some of the bigger picture dynamics at play in our professional lives. Now, the discussion opened up with a focus on the art of storytelling, something that Simon knows a great deal about. He's been telling stories to influence executives for years, and he's made appearances on media outlets like the BBC, CNBC, the Wall Street Journal, and many more. But our conversation went a lot deeper than that, discussing the health of the procurement profession, the vulnerabilities associated with being an introvert or speaking publicly, and the potential ways to overcome those fears, and why it's important to try and see a story through the audience's eyes long before we tell it. And where else will you hear about the Gruffalo in a procurement podcast? The reason why I love using it as an example is the Gruffalo is 24 pages long. Mm -hmm. There's 635 words. Uh, And within those 635 words, there's five characters, there's heroes and villains, there's danger, there's hope, there's an escape from impossible odds, and uh, sort of a, a you know a happy feel good ending, and when you read it, um, you know not a word is wasted, mm-hmm. and the combination of the pictures on the on the on the book, the words and the way that you put on your funny voices for your kids to read it, those three things come together to create theatre. Yeah, and what I sort of say to to to, to people or anyone who cares to listen because you know I'm quite annoying, so I'll say it to anyone. Um, <laughs> is that actually that's not that different to us. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go and do a presentation, you've got a bunch of those things at your disposal too. A PowerPoint, the words you're going to say, how you're going to say them, and 635 words. Most people put more than that on the first page of their PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And yet you can pack all that in. You can hear the full conversation in the latest Art of Procurement podcast wherever you choose to listen to your podcasts. Later in September, my colleague Helen McKenzie and I will be at ProcureCon EU, taking place in Barcelona, and I'll be running a roundtable focused on identifying and using sources of market intelligence. If you are going to be there, please do let me know. Now, in the run-up to this event, ProcureCon has published the results of a really insightful CPO survey. It's titled, Leveraging Data and Integrating Channels for a Seamless Customer Journey. There are some really interesting invites, such as seven different strategies that are being used by procurement teams to drive innovation by leveraging their supply base. However, there's one data point that really is fascinating to me that could also be counter to the goals of some procurement teams. So in a section of the report which asks which initiatives are being prioritized in regards to CSR and sustainability, 58% of the respondents to that question, which was the top answer, responded a living wage. Now, this is interesting to me, given our typical cost savings goals and that we often uh, push for driving competitive advantage in our businesses by beating the market from a price perspective. So how would a cost increase be viewed in your organization if the reason was to ensure a living wage for the staff of your suppliers? Now, is this necessary? Well, absolutely it is. But I'd love to hear some examples of how that's playing out in your buying strategies. If you do have examples, reach out to me via the usual channels. And to read the report in full, just check out the link in the show notes episode of today's podcast. 
This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. As part of Mastermind Live 2022, we're holding a series of polls in association with our headline partner, Globality, to better understand the experience that procurement provides. This week's poll question explores the buying experience. How likely do you think users would be to comply with procurement processes if they offered an intuitive Amazon-like buying experience? Is that very likely? Somewhat likely? Not very likely? Uh, they still wouldn't. We'd love to hear your thoughts. You can use the link in the show notes to take part in the poll. Once you've voted, you can also see how your peers have voted. Two. This week saw the appointment of a new Prime Minister in the UK, Liz Truss. And one of Truss's priorities is to manage the energy cost crisis that's currently gripping the UK. While energy prices have been increasing around the world, the UK is being particularly hard hit, with stories of many businesses' energy costs increasing four to tenfold on last year. The result for the economy could be catastrophic. Now, if you have suppliers in the UK, you need to be on alert for potential financial difficulties as a result of this. In fact, I suggest going one step further and reaching out to those suppliers and asking how you can help them. Are there ways you can help them mitigate other costs in their businesses to offset these increases, or at least partially offset these increases? Or are there other ways you can advise them to reduce either their energy footprint or their energy costs if you have a lot more experience as a business at buying energy than they do? One. We have two events on the docket that I'm excited to share with you. First of all, we'll be joined on September 20th by my good friends at CoreCentric, Joe Payne and Jennifer Ulrich, in our next AOP Live webinar to discuss how to close the procurement talent gap by the strategic use of professional services and advisory firms. That's particularly relevant right now as we're coming out of the great talent shortage. Now, next month also sees the return of our flagship fall event, AOP Mastermind Live 2022. On October 4th and 5th, we're going to be exploring ways in which we can 10x the impact of procurement. Here are just two of the sessions. Multiple time CEO Tony Uphoff will share how to set big visions and build a team to achieve them while not losing sight of the day-to-day -day responsibilities. An ex-Division 1 collegiate and NFL athlete, Lou Alexander, we're helping us to apply the athlete's mindset to our procurement journey. You can register today for both the AOP Live and AOP Mastermind Live, by going to artofprocurement.com slash calendar, that's artofprocurement.com slash calendar, or clicking the links in today's episode show notes. And if you can't make it on the day, registering gives you priority access to the video replays, which are available as soon as the event finishes. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.